we have discussed the computational complexity of uh, several equilibrium concepts in the past in particular we have talked about the computational complexity of uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium and then we have uh, uh, we have seen that uh, for correlated equilibrium it's much easier so let us look at what is the complexity for uh, finding a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium so here is the same game uh, from the previous module and also uh, the algorithm the backward induction algorithm that finds once uh, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium for for a for any uh, uh, PIEFG this algorithm is nothing but a dynamic programming and uh, the uh, the idea of uh, subgame perfection is essentially uh, um, based on this uh, this idea of uh, backward induction so if you uh, think about it carefully uh, you are trying to find the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium which is a uh, which is a Nash equilibrium at every possible subgame so therefore the most natural thing is this backward induction which is, which starts from the leaf nodes and uh, finds uh, the equilibrium at every subgame and goes towards the uh, root now there are several advantages for uh, uh, for this uh, this kind of games this uh, perfect information extensive form games uh, we uh, the first thing that we observe is that uh, subgame perfect nash equilibrium is guaranteed to exist in finite piefgs uh, and uh, the the you can f uh, argue it formally but the intuition is that it is basically based on the fact that uh, you have an algorithmic way of showing that the uh, the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium exists and the algorithmic way is the uh, backward induction algorithm and you can show that uh, this will always converge to an uh, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium therefore every finite PIEFG will have a have an SPNE. We have also seen that uh, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium is a, a pure strategy Nash equilibrium uh, for the entire game because it is a Nash equilibrium at every subgame of this game. Uh, it is definitely going to be a PSNE. Uh, so uh, we know that the general games, uh, normal form games, may not have a have a pure strategy Nash equilibrium, but uh, this uh, extensive perfect information extensive form games are one class of games where uh, uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium is guaranteed to exist. There are several other kinds of games where pure strategy Nash equilibrium exists for sure. This uh, 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 this PIEFG is one of them. And the third advantage is this algorithm of backward induction to find SPNE is very simple. I mean, it's the most intuitive thing that you can think of. But the trouble here, the disadvantage is that uh, to find the SPNE, you will have to pass the whole tree and for uh, realistic games the uh, the tree can really be very very large for instance uh, for, uh, chess has a, has a uh, game tree which has 10 to the power 150 vertices and this is a huge uh, huge number uh, it's needless to say that they, this is more than the total number of molecules in the world so uh, even if you have a very fast supercomputer you won't be able to uh, compute the the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium for uh, something some game like chess if uh, it was possible by some means uh, maybe uh, some other kind of computational machinery which could find uh, parts over all these uh, 10 to the power 150 vertices and uh, do the backward induction and find out the uh, optimal strategy then uh, we would have solved uh, solved uh, the one of the uh, very early uh, questions that we have asked in this course uh, which is about uh, the the result by, by von Neumann that which uh, of these three statements uh, for chase is true so we know that uh, uh, there exists a winning strategy for white uh, there exist uh, or there exists a uh, uh, winning strategy for black or there exists a draw guaranteeing strategy for both these players and uh, one and exactly one of these uh, three statements is true but the uh, that was not uh, which was not answer is that uh, we do not know which one them uh, which of them is uh, true and if there exists some winning strategy or draw guaranteeing strategy which strategy is that if we could find the SPNE then we could have uh, conclusively given the answer of that so uh, for, for small games like tic-tac-toe we can actually list down it does not have too many vertices uh, in the game tree we can do that 
and find the uh, SPNE and uh, it will be a good exercise to do and find out that this SPNE is nothing but the draw guaranteeing strategy for both these players. So we know that uh, the there exists a uh, uh, strategy which guarantees the draw for both these players and that will uh, in, uh, that will emerge as the SPNE of this uh, of this PIEFG. SPNE also has some other criticisms and uh, these are mostly about the behavioral aspects. So uh, it uh, asks about the cognitive limit of real players. So let's uh, give an example. Uh, this uh, game is called the centipede game, uh, uh, particularly because of, of the structure of this game. It looks like a centipede. So in every round of this game or every uh, stage of this game, uh, every player players take turns and play this game and they have two options to pick uh, one action play across or play down so these are the two uh, possibilities so uh, these two actions and uh, if the previous player has played uh, across then the next player gets a chance to play again and it also has the same uh, set of actions available to it and if any player picks the action d the down then the game ends and uh, that uh, gives a specific outcome, specific utility to both these players. So let us look at this uh, uh, five stages of this uh, centipede game. Now what is the uh, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium of this game? If you look at, uh, if you use the backward induction then at this uh, node you will apply the, uh, try to find out the uh, Nash equilibrium, pure strategy Nash equilibrium for player one. You can see that this number is larger so therefore playing d is a better response so if uh, if you go back now one step and uh, ask what uh, player two should play it knows if it plays a one will play d and it will get an utility of three while if it plays d uh, then it gets a utility of four so therefore playing d is also a better option for play player two and you can continue this and you will see that for all the players playing down is the is the best response so therefore, the uh, the subgame perfect uh, Nash equilibrium is the case where all the players are playing D. Now, what is the problem with this prediction? Uh, there has been extensive studies of uh, uh, real world, real people uh, playing this uh, centipede game, and uh, uh, the populations were random participants, university students, or even uh, grandmasters of chess. Uh, almost all of them. Uh, have played it uh, at least for a few rounds so it never happened that uh, it ends at the very beginning so there had been uh, various reasons uh, that has been claimed for this maybe players are altruistic they also care about the utilities of the other players uh, or they have limited computational uh, capability so that they cannot uh, uh, compute the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium and therefore do not pick that action or um, there are certain kind of uh, developments or uh, variations of this game so it has also been the same uh, game has also been experimented uh, with a larger difference in the payoffs so for instance if all these numbers all the utility numbers were uh, multiplied by 10 or maybe 100 uh, then does it make any difference to the way people play it turns out that it does really make a difference and the experiments ha have actually exhibited that. So when the players have much larger stake, much larger utility, uh, when they play one thing versus other, then they do think a little more carefully and uh, try to uh, give a better choice and that uh, leads to, clo to a closer to uh, SPNE performance. So that was the uh, the qualitative uh, criticism about the idea of SPNE and uh, that uh, it does not work so well in practice. Uh, but there are certain other uh, uh, criticism from the, from the theoretical aspect of SPNE as well. So subgame perfect Nash equilibrium uh, is actually talking about uh, what action uh, will you play when the game reaches that history. So for instance, uh, in the, in our previous example. We have seen that what uh, uh, action should player one will play uh, if it uh, reaches this particular node. Uh, but uh, the subgame perfect uh, Nash equilibrium, so we have seen this AG, comma CF to be the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. And if this player, the first player is playing A, 
then there is no no uh, reason to think that it will ever end up in this uh, node. So uh, a player who, who is playing uh, the action A at the first round that is taking a completely different path in the game tree and it will never reach uh, a state which is uh, uh, which will give the opportunity to the same player to play G again. So then what's the point of uh, giving this kind of a guarantee uh, which itself says that you cannot reach that particular node. So they, these are the two um, uh, main criticisms about SPNE. Uh, however, for various kinds of games, uh, uh, strategic uh, uh, extensive form games, uh, we can actually uh, use uh, SPNE. Uh, this is quite a well-known um, equilibrium concept. Uh, so we will now go and extend this idea for subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. To, uh, to a game uh, where we cannot really observe all the states of the of this game. So, so far we have discussed only games like chess uh, or tic-tac-toe where you can actually observe the actions and the current state of the game perfectly. This is the perfect information game. But uh, there are certain games and we have discussed this earlier, uh, games like cards where you cannot really observe the whole um, uh, current state of the game. Certain part of that game is certainly visible, but certain parts are not visible. So in that case, you uh, the, the players use certain kinds of beliefs. And that is what we are going to use for this extension of this idea of SPNE.